The main stories at 7. John Jarvis takes oath of office as new chairman of the Antigua and Barbuda Electoral Commission. Trade minister sets to initiate legal action against the medical school official after ultimatum passes without an apology. Police force mourns the death of one of its former members. And Antigua and Barbuda and Cuba mark 28 years of diplomatic relations. Those stories begin right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening, you're in tune with the ABS Evening News. Thank you so much for having joined us. My name is Garfield Burford, a warm welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew, good evening. Let's tell you about this developing story first. It's a major developing one in relation uh, to the Antigua and Brabida Electoral Commission, Terry. Yeah, certainly. I, John Montgomery Jobs, do swear that I will honor, uphold, and preserve the Constitution and the laws of Antigua and Barbuda, and that I will consciously, impartially, and do the best right to all manner of people without fear or favor. Section or ill will shall not be found. That's the moment uh, when John Jarvis took the oath of office as chairman of the Antigua and Barbuda Electoral Commission. He received the instrument of office from Governor General Sir Rodney Williams in a ceremony at Government House today, succeeding Nathaniel Paddy James, who retired this week upon turning 75. Governor General Sir Rodney Williams wished Jarvis all the best in his new role, while he pointed to the significant responsibility on his shoulders. In any country where there is a it is very important that the freedom which the people enjoy, that it is kept. And it is important that whatever is done from the electoral side is done in such a way that it gains the confidence of the people who are the voters in the country. And so therefore you have a serious responsibility in ensuring that that is done in Antigua and Barbuda. The new ABEC chairman uh, thanks his predecessor for the work which was done in advancing the commission's mandate during his tenure. His priority areas include conducting a successful general election, constitutionally due no later than 2023, finding permanent homes for registration units, and training and professional development for staff in the area of electoral management. Jarvis uh, was appointed as a member of the commission on December 21st of 2015. He has also served as a returning officer for five general elections in this country and has also been the lead training officer of ABEX electoral workers over the years. Supervisor of elections, uh, Dame Lornemis, Lorna Simon, uh, congratulated the new chairman on his appointment and has wished him a successful tenure. Let's tell you about this developing story now. The Medicinal Cannabis Authority has issued two licenses to grow Antigua and Barbuda. Now, these licenses authorize the entity to dispense medicinal cannabis and open and operate a medicinal cannabis lounge. These would be in accordance with the Cannabis Act of 2018 in Antigua and Barbuda. Well, the licenses were presented to uh, Mrs. Uh, Yadira Moody Stewart of Grow Antigua and Barbuda by Joy Marie King, Head of Commercial Diplomacy and Compliance of the MCA and Mr. Regis Burton, Head of Operations and Information Technology at the MCA. Also present at the handover ceremony today were the Chairman of the MCA Board, uh, Ambassador Davin Joseph, as well as Veldon Regay, Head of Inspection of the MCA. Veldon Regay is an Inspector of Police. Well, Foreign Affairs and Immigration and Trade Minister, the Honorable E.P. Chet Green, who will be initiating legal action against uh, Dr. Adedewu Akande, the Vice Chairman of the University of Health Sciences, Antigua. It follows comments attributed to Dr. Akande in the print media that Minister Green was on the campus premises illegally on Sunday. Minister Green refuted those claims and made it clear he had received permission from a Miss Sebastian, whom the security guard had called on the telephone. This was the ultimatum served on Dr. Akande by Minister Green last evening. Did so at the direction of the cabinet of Antigua and Barbuda. 
to look at what is the government on property, which has been left derelict, uh, abandoned, and certainly unperforming, uh, with a view towards finding uh, investments for the area to restore the operations of a medical school, which the, the facility has served for several years, um, beginning back in the 1980s. I did so at the the minister told us today that ultimatum passed without an apology and retraction being preferred. He is therefore referring the matter to his attorney. Well, the minister says oh, while there have been claims the institution has been operating virtually, physical classes have not been held on the campus for several years. He argues this is, this is of concern as the campus sits on 50 acres of land leased from the government and this property could be used to generate economic activity. In other news, the Royal Police Force of Antigua and Barbuda and the wider community are now mourning the death of Eric Henry. Henry was a former police officer as well as a former superintendent of Her Majesty's Prison and a security advisor. He was pronounced dead at 9.56 last night at the Celeste Bird Medical Center. He had been found in an unresponsive state by a relative in his Liberta home last evening and rushed to hospital. He was 78 years old. Of course, there have been tributes pouring in from both the police force as well as the correctional services uh, following his death. Police are probing a suspected case of arson at the Clear Hall Secondary School. School officials say they needed to assess the situation, which resulted from an overnight blaze at the facility. Well, as a result, all in-person classes at the institution were cancelled on Wednesday. A message from the school informed parents' uh, notice of the way forward will be sent after the assessment has been completed. Fire Chief, Assistant Commissioner of Police Elvis Weaver confirmed he suspects the fire was started by arsonists. Cuba's ambassador to Antigua and Barbuda, Her Excellency Maria Esther Fife Cabrera, says this country is one of Cuba's most important bilateral partners. Her remarks come as St. John's and Havana mark 28 years of diplomatic relations today. The relations between Antigua and Barbuda and Cuba could be taken as an example for other countries because these relations are based on respect cooperation, brotherhood or sisterhood, respect to each other. Well, the diplomat says Antigua and Barbuda's support is vital given the challenges Cuba faces from the long-standing U.S.-imposed trade embargo. Every year in the United Nations we receive the support and generous work by the government or the representative of Antigua and Barbuda. This is something that we really appreciate because what it's called embargo, we call blockade, is the main obstacle for the development of Cuba. Well, the ambassador says despite the embargo's crippling effects on Cuba's economy, Cubans have had great success in healthcare, education, and several other fields as well. Can you imagine what Cuba could do without this blockade? I cannot even imagine that because the creativity of the Cuban citizen, the ideas and the possibility of helping that we have inside could be developed much more because we could have resources for doing that. Well, over the years, Antigua and Barbuda has benefited from Cuban health professionals, including doctors, nurses, and laboratory technicians from Cuba's medical brigade. Cuba has also provided hundreds of scholarships to Antiguan and Barbudan students. Cuban engineers and technical experts have also assisted with public works projects. After Hurricane Irma devastated Barbuda in 2017, Cuba sent two cargo ships with some 200 tons of relief supplies. Antigua and Barbuda and Cuba signed a joint communique at a formal ceremony in New York to establish diplomatic relations on the 6th of April, 1994. Meanwhile, Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable E.P. Chet Green has written to Cuba's Foreign Minister, Bruno Rodriguez Perea, extending best wishes on the occasion of the 28th anniversary of diplomatic relations being forged. He says the relationship has evolved into one of solidarity in an increasingly uncertain world. 
He has also assured Cuba that Antigua and Barbuda continues to actively condemn the protracted economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed by the United States on Cuba. Minister Green says he looks forward to the advancement of the mutual goals of both states in such areas as climate change and sustainable development. Fifth form students at Irene B. Williams School benefited from an empowerment retreat today. It's a major part of the school administration's efforts to prepare them for future endeavors, even as they prepare to sit the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate or CSEC examinations in a few months' time. Our reporter, Kim Emanuel Beard, was at Camp Blizzard for that activity today. Your repeated actions, let's go, your repeated actions become your habits. And your habits produce your habits. If you're not satisfied with your habits. you got to change your habits. But you can't change your habits until you change your actions. What you're doing? Under this year's theme, Preparing for the Future, a Life Strategy, Deputy Principal of the Irene B. Williams Secondary, Lisa Benjamin, believes it is critical for fifth form students to focus on the next stage of their lives. The empowerment retreat is the brainchild of Benjamin, who says it will help students to make the future their center of attention. It's important for them to know what life is going to be after school. And so I am very specific with who I invite to the retreat because I know there's the motivational aspect that is critical, and that is why I selected Mr. Terrific Roberts. I also know that they will have questions regarding CXC. Teacher and motivational speaker, Cleophane Terrific Roberts, was one of the featured speakers. He says it's important to create that awareness in students so they can be conscious of their abilities to do and be their best. I just embrace the opportunity to, 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 to create that awareness in the boys and girls that thoughts precede results and imagination creates reality. Also in attendance was the recruiting officer for the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus, Adiola Matthew, who says the role of the university is to ensure students have access to high quality education. We want to ensure that students know that they have an option to pursue their tertiary studies at the Five Islands campus with our UE family. And so we just want to share that with our students this morning. So students who are presently taking CSEC exams in the upcoming sitting, they can enroll during the month of September to November and get enrolled for January. And how do the fifth form students feel after this retreat? How is everybody feeling? <laughs> for ABS News, I'm Kim Emanuel Beard. Meanwhile, Deputy Principal of the Irene B. Williams Secondary School, Lisa Benjamin, explains why there has not been cause to delay the sitting of the CXC administered examinations in May and June of this year. I think that the students want to get it over and done with. It's a stressful period for them. And after secondary school life, whether they go to college or whether they go on to work, is going to be very difficult for them to focus on um, examinations at that point. She adds this is why students are encouraged to do their best even during the COVID-19 pandemic. The call to defer the sitting of the CSEC and CAPE exams has been made by the Caribbean Union of Teachers and the Barbados Union of Teachers as they argue the residual impact of the COVID-19 pandemic continues to pose challenges to the education system in the region. Well, local CXC registrar Myrick Smith says there have been no calls from educators for a delay in the May-June setting of CXC administered examinations. However, he says he has exercised flexibility regarding school-based assessments or SBAs. When we come back, we'll turn our attention to more of the national developments we're following closely for you here on the ABS Evening News, including this one. The CDC places Antigua and Barbuda in level three of COVID-19 risks. We'll tell you about that story. Plus, later, major boost for the team of Celeste Bird Medical Center as a high-profile team from the Caribbean. A new surgery foundation is on island. We'll, we'll expect to have a live update as well on this developing story. Coming up, right after the break. Please stay with us. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long.
But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Prior to the discovery of Antigonite, since 1981, we have offered unique jewelry in both silver and gold, as all of our clients deserve authentic, indigenous mementos, whether rings, brooches, bracelets, or earrings. The Gold Smithy, Redcliffe Key, St. John's, Antigua. Visit our website at www.goldsmithy.com or call us at 268 Four six two four six zero one. George and Henry are neighbors. Henry called Terminex to protect his home from termites. George unfortunately didn't. The lesson is simple. You need to protect your home now by calling Terminex Antigua, the nation's leading pest control provider. We'll stop those damaging invaders in their tracks. Book your inspection today at 463-0885 or send us a quick message, Power Over Pest. Hetty Dental Clinic offers you reasonable prices and the best dental job. Among the services provided by Hetty Dental Clinic are oral examinations, digital oral x-rays, whitening and fluoride treatment, digital panoramic x-rays, root canal treatment, Wisdom Tooth Surgical Extractions, Cosmetic Dentistry, Crowns and Bridges, Dentures All Kind Full and Partial, Penis Extractions, Children's Dentistry, Dental Implants and much, much more. Open Monday to Friday, 8.30am to 4.30pm and on Saturdays from 8.30am to 1.30pm. Telephone number 562-7878. See Hablo Español. Private parking is also available. Antigua Barbuda Today, bringing you Antigua Planned Parenthood Association's invite to an egg hunt and family fair. Fun music and games. The Medical Association of Antigua and Barbuda, Inc. has executive board members Dr. Rudd and Dr. Stevens Gordon join us. And American Corner Antigua graces us with Easter paint and create event, as well as a chance to get our gamer on with eSports Club Come out and learn about STEAM opportunities. But wait, there's more. It's all here on Antigua Barbuda Today. Thank you for staying here with us on the ABS uh, Evening News. The United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has placed Antigua and Barbuda in level three for COVID-19. This travel notice indicates a high level of the virus, but is an improvement from the level four in which the country had been placed previously. The State, the State Department uh, Travel Advisory Level 3 means people with intent to go to the destination should reconsider travel for Antigua and Barbuda. This despite the considerable drop in COVID-19 cases as the country now has only eight active cases. Since the start of the pandemic, 7,493 people have contracted the virus with 7,350 recovering. The notice is advising travelers that their risk of contracting COVID-19 and developing severe symptoms may be lower if they are fully vaccinated with an FDA-authorized vaccine. Let's stay with the subject of healthcare because a high-profile team from the Caribbean Newer Surgery Foundation is in Antigua and Barbuda offering support to the Celeste Bird Medical Center team. Well, the foundation's chairman, Dr. Myron Roll, says they will perform at no cost six brain and spinal surgeries 
on Thursday. He spells out other purposes of the visit. We're also going to teach our nurses about pre- and post-operative care. So we'll have an in-service training. And then we're going to donate a drill, a very special drill that we use at Harvard to create burr holes and to uh, do simple neurosurgical procedures. We'll teach that to the surgeons here so that when we leave, we're, we're sort of leaving training, we're leaving devices, we're leaving something behind so that people can have sort of um, an understanding of how to manage these diseases. Now, the newer surgeon tells us that once they've completed their work here, they will offer collaborative uh, telehealth services at no cost to the physicians on island. The globalization of world with telehealth and the fast time, real time um, expertise that could be provided through uh, these different mediums, as you mentioned, Skype, Zoom, uh, WhatsApp, whatever the case may be, I think it's exciting. So we're looking forward to building that partnership and we want to return here as well to be in person and do more workshops, do more training and provide more assistance and service as much as we can. The new research team has so far done work in the Bahamas, in Jamaica and Montserrat. This leg of the journey has been sponsored in part by the Mark Roos Foundation. A look there at some of the national developments we're following closely. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of the stories that we're tracking uh, comes to us on the latest on the, uh, on the matter in relation to the Commonwealth Secretary General. Uh, Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness seeks to explain in Parliament yesterday why Jamaica has nominated its Foreign Affairs Minister, Kamina Johnson-Smith, for the top post. And later, of course, we continue to follow the latest from Ukraine. These stories are all ahead for us right here on the EBS Evening News. We'll be right back. Top up on snacks, juices, and household supplies. When you shop at KNL Distributors, we promise affordable prices and variety like you've never seen. Have fun with our three for five snack pack. You mix and match popcorn, Cheetos, Doritos, and so much more. We also carry a variety of cereals, granola bars, and healthy snacks. Juices and sodas, we've got it all. Sunny D and Capri Sun for the kids. Ocean Spray, Tropicana, Canada Dry, and Iced Tea. Pick up your favorite household items, supplies such as laundry detergent and fragrance boosters and other cleaning agents. Free island-wide delivery on orders over $60. We're KNL Distributors and Supplies, now located at Number 3 Painters Industrial Park, Sir Sydney Walling Highway. Seeing is experiential. Seeing is everyday life. Seeing is style, class, and sheer sophistication. At iMobile Vision Care, we offer state-of-the-art lab technology and the widest variety of quality eyewear from the biggest brands to suit your lifestyle. Stop by our offices at Dr. Rosalie Drive, Lower Gambles to get a comprehensive digital eye exam or call us at 562-7823 and ask about our optical care services. iMobile Vision Care. See and be seen. Welcome, a versatile and dynamic SUV, the Toyota Rays. Pick your engine, the fuel-efficient 1200cc or the vibrant 1000cc turbo. Accessorized with an 8-inch display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Amazing luggage space and monthly payments as low as $716. Jump into a Toyota Rays today. Raise your style. Raise your confidence. Raise your vibe. Hardy Motors Limited on Factory and American Roads. Call 462-1062 or visit us on Facebook, Instagram, or HardyMotorsLimited.com. Join the good life with iNet Fiber. What's the good life? It's a life with strong, unlimited, reliable, fast fiber internet from iNet. Speed starts at 50 megabits per second for $189.99 per month, which includes access to a special mobile plan starting from $75 per month. Go boldly into your digital life with the world's most advanced broadband connection. Need a strong internet connection with fast upload and download speeds for video calls, gaming, and streaming? Then visit Visit inetfiber.apua.ag to sign up or upgrade to the good life with Inet Fiber. Under the distinguished patronage of their excellencies, Sir Rodney Williams and Lady Williams, the Antigua and Barbuda Youth Symphony Orchestra and the Canny Masons present Playing to Inspire Four under the directorship of renowned American conductor Jonathan Haywood. Also featuring cellist Ashok Clauda.
and Panis Cancodis. Be captivated by the voices of our Playing to Inspire Youth Choir. April 16, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. at the St. John's Pentecostal Church House of Restoration Ministries on Lachlan Benjamin Drive. Tickets, adults, $50. Children under 12, $30. Tickets are available at Woods Pharmacy, The Larda, The Best of Books, Crab Hole Liquors, and Cisco Pharmacy in Jolly Harbor. Playing to Inspire 4, Saturday, April 16th, a musical experience you won't want to miss. This week on Conversations, we speak to Sir David Shaul, owner of Shaul's Toys, Gifts and Housewares. But that was where those things started because everything happened there. I'll tell you something that probably wouldn't happen today. Forgive me for saying this at home. Conversations, a short yet stimulating, revealing look at the life of prominent Antiguans and Barbudans. Join me, Natalie Clark White, for Antigua and Barbuda's prominent people stories and be inspired. The Regional News is sponsored by Antigua Lottery. We're here today with some Lucky Pick players. Let's hear what they have to say about Lucky Pick from the Caribbean Lottery. Have you ever won Lucky Pick? I can't count the amount of times. <laughs> I win a lot of times. What advice would you give other Lucky Pick players? Keep on playing, man. Till you win. What would you do if you won the jackpot? I would buy a nice vehicle and build my own house. How would you feel if you won Lucky Pick? Bye, that would be a nice feeling for the true guys. Get your Lucky Pick tickets today. Caribbean Lottery. Play with us. Win with us. Welcome back to Time Now for a look at news overseas. We begin in the region. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness has defended the decision to nominate his Foreign Affairs Minister, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, for the post of Commonwealth Secretary General. Now, the issue has threatened to drive a wedge among countries of the 15-member Caribbean community, CARICOM, and has been called a monumental error by Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister, Gaston Brown. Now, here are some of the comments from Prime Minister Andrew Holness as carried by Television Jamaica. Kenya nominated a candidate and then subsequently withdrew. And today, Tuvalu formally launched its candidature in London. And it is quite possible that others could emerge. We can conclude that the first term of the incumbent has left room for challenge. In recent weeks, Jamaica has had to consider the state of affairs and future of the Commonwealth, in conjunction with the incredibly strong encouragement and support to put forward a candidate, and specifically in the person of Minister Johnson. Now, Mr. Holness adds that he has held consultations with fellow CARICOM leaders to gauge their views on the leadership of the Commonwealth Secretariat. With very limited exceptions, the responses of the heads of government and heads of state as well as foreign ministers with whom we engaged across regions, have been extremely encouraging. With several of them voluntarily committing to seek support for the candidature from their regional colleagues. On the strength of that feedback, and more importantly, my personal knowledge of the Minister's unwavering commitment to public service in the interest of global development, we took a sovereign decision. He says he has since spoken with CARICOM Chairman John Briseno of, of uh, Belize uh, on the issue and has doubled down on his decision to nominate his Foreign Affairs Minister. Uh, Holness has also sought to downplay suggestions this could deal a colossal blow to regional unity. We are providing an alternative in response to persisting issues and the strong positive response to consultations on Minister Johnson Smith's candidacy. Against this background, there is no need to position our decision as controversial or divisive. It is never Jamaica's intention to seek to divide our CARICOM family. In other news now, the Guyana police force has explained a viral video where a female rank was forcibly removed from a building. The details from Travis Chase of HGPTV Nightly News. 
In response to a video posted online showing a female special constabulary rank being forcibly removed from a compound, the Ghana Police Force says it has made arrangements for the four psychologists to meet with the rank and for a psychosocial analysis to be done. The video went viral on social media on Monday, and it was not until Tuesday, April 5, that the Ghana Police Force explained that the incident happened since January 14, 2022. The police explained that the female rank was allegedly instructed that she was to be relocated from the location to constabulary headquarters. She, however, allegedly refused the instructions given and continued to turn up at the location she was being reassigned from. Reportedly, the constabulary rank refused to vacate the premises, allegedly threw herself on the ground before she was escorted off the property. All right then, this is what I got to do, get her out. Look how she turned on herself. According to the police, an evaluation was performed on the female rank by external authorities who on Monday, April 3, submitted a clearance report to the Commissioner of Police acting Clifton Hicken, stating that she is only fit to work during the day. Well, thanks to HGPTV Nightly News there. Now, rousing COVID-19 cases in Barbados will not affect face-to-face -face classes. That's according to Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Best. Here's more from Barbados today. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Best told a national COVID-19 update last evening that while there has been some cases in the schools, the infections remain low and there's no need for concern at this stage. We have analyzed the data from the 21st of February when the schools resumed face-to-face -face classes and we am not at liberty to say what that information is. We simply don't have the clearances yet. But the number is relatively small when you take into consideration what is happening in the community. So this is what we anticipated. We did anticipate that we would pick up a few cases in the schools, but we're not seeing sustained transmission happening within the schools because the protocols are working. In related news now, COVID-19 restrictions have been officially removed after two years in Grenada after being implemented as a means to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Well, GBN News sought reactions from members of the public even as the chief medical officer in the Spice Isle serves a reminder to the public that everyone is responsible for their own health. Here's more. Well, it's right because you, you, you um, at least they say it's to uh, don't pray for a while. So I feel it's wise that, um, yeah, we got a mask, you have carnival coming up. You want to reach this year, that's what you really depend on as a government. So I feel it's wise, so we pull the mask for the present in the meantime. I believe that individuals, we have a responsibility to protect ourselves, right? So if they raise the restrictions, you just, persons just have to just wear their masks if you want to. So the country have to open up. We have to get back to business. So if we just can't just let COVID, you know, kind of control, control our lives, we have to rise above that. I think it's wise that all you should still have it. Yes, because you don't know who is who up to now. So I think that all you should still have that. To open the economy, to things so get lively again, that's a good move. But we still have to watch out for the virus is there. It's not gone. Now we have to still wear a mask and thing. Perfectly honest with you, um, seeing that the, the, the virus of surge in China again and it's kind of on the rise, I don't think it's a wise thing. Right now, I don't think that that is the best thing. You know, they should hold the restrictions in place. Maybe to, Maybe till August or so. In an interview last Friday, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles appealed to the Grenadian public to take their responsibility seriously as COVID-19 restrictions come to an end. The CMO said the people will have to do what they think is necessary to protect themselves. And that's it for regional developments. Great customer service, in my view, can be defined as an exchange of information that is received well on both ends. Recently, I actually just had another baby. And at that point, I must say state insurance has been very reliable. My name is Ellis Richards. I am a fitness trainer slash training camp owner. My mom and her significant other encouraged me greatly to join the family plan because I would have needed something to um, target any health concerns that would arise in the future. Life insurance is something that we can never foresee and if everyone is covered it will actually reduce your liability of expenditure.
Financial obligations should arise when medical expenses come about. We don't know what eventuality is going to come to us. It, it's going to meet all of us at some point. I believe that if I should sustain an injury during skydiving, state insurance would have my interest at heart and take care of me as things go on. The international news is brought to you by State Insurance Company Limited. Live in a better state of mind. Welcome back. Time now for a look at news over news farther afield. Let's look at the situation in Ukraine in Eastern Europe. The town of Borodyanka may have faced some of the worst attacks since Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine. Police in the town, which is about 60 kilometers uh, northwest of the capital, Kyiv, say there could be hundreds of people buried in the rubble of civilian apartment blocks destroyed in Russian shelling uh, of, the attack, of the area. Here's more from the BBC. The destruction in the center of Borodyanka is the worst for its size I've seen in any of the towns around Kyiv, including much fought over Erpin and Bucha. The worst killing in Borodyanka might have come when these flats were destroyed. A line of them stood here. You can see the gaps. Up to you, mate. Yeah. Next door to the rubble, Dmitro Stashevsky inspected his shop. This is your shop? Uh, shop, apteka, uh, medical, 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 pharmacy, it's a pharmacy, medical. yeah, it's destroyed, everything's gone. We went upstairs where his wife Svetlana was trying to clean up his mother's flat. Their family is safe, but not their friends in the destroyed building next door. They were all our neighbors. Shortly after the airstrike, People nearby heard some voices shouting for help. Russian soldiers stopped them digging. They threatened to shoot if they tried. Dimitro left 30 others in the cellar before the strike. When he went back in the morning, it was full of rubble. All 30 are missing. You're lucky to be alive, aren't you? <laughs> yes, he said. My wife, mother and daughter were praying for me. This is a civilian block of flats. Now, only a ballistic missile or an airstrike can do this sort of damage. Under the laws of war, killing civilians and wanton destruction are both crimes, unless it can somehow be proved that that was a military target. Close by, local people were getting some food organized by their priest, who said he'd seen the Russians shooting civilians. You saw civilians being killed by a Russian sniper. It was the 2nd of March near the petrol station. We were driving along, followed by two civilian cars. They just shot them. It was an execution. Now, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin defended America's response to the war in Ukraine during a heated exchange with Republican Rep Representative Matt Gates, who accused the Pentagon of overestimating Russia's military capability. Now, here is uh, uh, that exchange, or part of it, as captured by Reuters News. Do you it's, you know, it's, it's, again, this is the most capable, the most combat-credible force in the world. It has been, and it will be so uh, going forward. Not if and we this continue down this path. To do that. Not if we embrace socialism. The, the fact that you're embarrassed by your by your country. By oh no no, no. I'm embarrassed by I'm, your leadership. I'm sorry for I am that. not embarrassed for my country. I wish it's we were not losing saying. to China. It's I what wish you're we saying. Were, you know what? The that's you know that is so th that is so disgraceful that you would sit here and conflate your failures with the failures of the uniformed service members. You guys said that that Russia would overrun Ukraine in 36 days. You said that the Taliban would be kept at bay for months. You totally blew those calls. And maybe we would be better at them if the National Defense University actually worked a little more on strategy and a little less on wokeism. Has it occurred to you that Russia has not overrun Ukraine because of what we've done? And our allies have done? But that was have, baked have into your flawed assessment. That? that was baked into your flawed assessment. And so you know, I saw that the Obama administration the, the that tried to Ukraine destroy our military by starving it of resources. And it seems the Biden administration is trying to destroy our military by force feeding it wokeism. Extraordinarily heated exchange there. Now, staying in the U.S., former President Barack Obama jokingly referred to Joe Biden as vice president on his return to the White House for the first time since 2017. The 44th president was there to celebrate the Affordable Care Act, ACA, and offered Biden a potential boost ahead of the midterm elections, which will be closely watched. Now, here is the moment as carried by Guardian News. Vice President Biden, vice president. <laughs> 
That was a joke. That was all set up. Mr. President, President welcome back to the White House, man. Feels like the good old days. <laughs> Being here with you brings back so many good memories. We just had lunch together, and we weren't sure who was supposed to sit where. Uh, <laughs> but now, I'm going to sign an executive order, and Barack, let me remind you, it's a hot mic. <laughs> Light moment there. Now, uh, finally, here is the news about another former president, because Donald Trump admitted that he did not win the 2020 presidential election in an interview with a panel of historians in 2021. Now, the ex-president also said Iran, China, and South Korea were happy Biden won, adding that, quote, the election was rigged and lost. Here is some of what he said. I said to him, you got to pay $5 billion. He said, no, no, no. We had a deal. He was going to pay $5 billion, $5 billion a year. But when I didn't win the election, he had to be the happiest. I, I, would rate, I would rate probably South Korea third or fourth happiest. China, Iran, Russia. I mean, Russia. Uh, he said to me, you're killing me with the pipeline. So we had a deal. Would have happened. All set. And then when the election was rigged and lost, what happened is that the deal for President uh, uh, there, Donald Trump. Uh, just an indication quickly that the U.S. has imposed sanctions against, these are first sanctions against President Vladimir Putin's inner circle, including his daughters. The list also includes the family of Foreign Affairs Minister uh, Sergei Lavrov and also major banks there. This, of course, comes in line of what happened uh, just this past week uh, when there were bodies uh, found strewn on the street in a town of Bucha, where the uh, Russians had withdrawn from. And of course, that uh, caused significant international opprobrium and outrage. Or turning our attention quickly to the sporting developments, Terry Andrew rejoins us. Good evening, Terry. <laughs> and joy for the men and girls. Certainly, uh, the Antiguan Barbuda female footballers, well, they took on Anguilla today. And of course, they were victorious. Uh, we heard uh, from the goal scorer, Kai Jacobs, uh, when we come back. Stay with us. This sports report is brought to you by Total Imports. COVID-19 is still with us. Don't let your guard down. At Total Import Supplies, we care about your health and we offer the best hand sanitizer on island that eliminates 99.9% .9 of germs instantly without water. Use TechChem hand sanitizer anytime, anywhere for long-lasting protection at school, in your office, in your vehicle. Also available at Total Import Supplies is our ChemSan disinfectant spray that kills 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria often found in the bathroom, the kitchen, and just about everywhere. Absolutely no rinse required. Ask about our other cleaning agents that promote a clean and healthy environment. So put your health and family first. Protect against COVID-19 with TechChem hand sanitizer and ChemSan disinfectant spray. Total import supplies, making your world totally spotless. Welcome back. The Antigua and Barbuda Benner girls were victorious in the CONCACAF women qualifiers against uh, Anguilla at the Savivi Richard Stadium today. Thanks to a Kai Jacob strike in the 27th minute, the home side secured their first goal and first win of the campaign. The forward pounced on a rebound after the Anguillan custodian failed to secure a free kick. Her close range effort was the only goal of the match, so Antigua and Barbuda taking a 1 0 victory over Anguilla. The goal scorer, Kai Jacob, says. They needed to score more goals uh, going into the encounter against Suriname. I feel excellent. Everybody did well. Uh, I feel like we should have scored a lot more because Suriname had been and we were up 5 nil. So I thought if we had put in a lot more goals, then we would have been a lot more confident going into the next game. But I think my team did well overall. So we have to put that win for the three points. 
Well, the Bena girls will now travel to Suriname to play host, uh, the host on Tuesday. So again, Antigua and Barbuda taking a 1-0 victory over Anguilla. The goal scorer, Kai Jacobs, uh, her goal came in the 27th minute. And the home side uh, secured their first goal and the first win of the campaign. The forward produced a rebound after the Anguillan custodian failed to secure a free kick in a glass. So, well, her close range effort was the only thing. will now travel to Suriname to play the horse. Elsewhere in other matches today, QSL edged the U.S. Virgin Islands, one goal to nil. Barbados trounced the British Virgin Islands, 5-1. And Dominica annihilated the Turks and Caicos Islands, eight goals to one. Now in the Champions League today, Real Madrid inflicted a 3-1 defeat on home team Chelsea this afternoon in the first leg of the Champions League quarterfinals. Karim Benzema converted a hat-trick uh, with uh, two of his strikes coming in the first half. Real Madrid led two goals to one at the break. A win two for Villarreal. Villarreal stunned the visiting Bayern Munich one goal to nil. Now to cricket, uh, the Trinbago Knight Riders have made two massive signings in the second window of the Hero Caribbean Premier League. With the full list, here's Jack Matthew. The Knight Riders have brought in the hard-hitting Andre Russell and the exciting Nicholas Puran. Russell last appeared for Jamaica Tallowers, while Puran played for Guyana Amazon Warriors. The Knight Riders' retentions are Kyron Pollard, Sunil Larine, Akil Hossein, Jaden Seals, and Tian Webster. Last year's champions, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, have kept skipper Dwayne Bravo, along with Evan Lewis, Sheldon Cottrell, Sherfin Rutherford, and Dominic Drakes. Their signings are Darren Bravo from the Knight Riders and Andrew Fletcher from the St. Lucia Kings. The Jamaica Talwas have retained the captain Robman Powell and their two leading run scorers from last season, Kenna Lewis and Shamar Brooks. New are Jamaicans Brandon King and Fabian Allen. King was with the Warriors, while Allen was on the championship winning St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots side. The 2021 runners-up, the St. Lucia Kings, will again go with last year's man of the tournament, Roston Chase, along with Kestrick Williams, Javar Royal, and Alzari Joseph. The signings for the Kings are Mark Dale and local boy Johnson Charles, who was with the Barbados Royals. The Royals have kept the captain Jason Holder, along with Kyle Mayers, Hayden Walsh Jr., O'Shane Thomas, and Naeem Young. The Royals' signings are Devon Thomas, who joins them from the Patriots, and Obed McCoy, who was with the Kings in 2021. And the Warriors have retained the Shimon Hetmeyer, Odin Smith, Romaria Shepherd and Chandra Paul Hemraj, new Akimo Paul and Gudakesh Moti. The 2022 Hero Caribbean Premier League will bowl off on August 30th. Jack Matthew, ABS Sports. Now to school's cricket, with a flood of boundaries, opener Malik Walsh slammed the whirlwind century to propel Clay Hall Secondary School to an eight-wicket victory over in the inter-schools uh, T20 competition. Captain Walsh smashed 16 fours and six maximums in a 51 ball, 129, as Clay Hall rattled up 205 for two against Sonoval Richards Academy. The losers were skittled out for 29, with Kimberly Anthony grabbing three for 11 in three overs. In another clash, a six-wicket haul for Zavin Peterson fired on beaten Antigua Grammar School to a nine-wicket trouncing of Jennings Secondary. Peterson bagged six for 10 in his four overs as AGS routed Jennings for 63. In reply, Captain Shamar Pereira hit 29 and not out in a total of 64 for one. Success two for Glanville Secondary, who overpowered neighbors' pairs by eight wickets. And for the first time since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, official face-to-face -face meetings by Cricket West Indies have taken place. Here's Jack Matthew with that story. President Ricky Scarry describes the interactions as opportunities for strategic and thought-provoking exchanges. The sessions at the Veranda Hotel here in Antigua included the 23rd Annual General Meeting. A release on the CWBI website indicates that the key highlights of the board's deliberations included the approval of regional cricket venues and match schedules for the remainder of 2022. Officials also looked at plans for the Emerging Players Academy at the Coolidge Cricket Grounds. In addition, the board received presentations on a robust fitness and medical action plan and an update on matters relating to sponsorship and media rights. Part of the process as well was that the attendees received a tour of the 20-acre CCG property, which has recently become the new home of CWI. Also, for the second year in succession, the board has published this annual report in its continued effort to improve transparency and accountability 
to all stakeholders. Jack Matthew, ABS Sports. Now in the IPL today, in an extraordinary display, Pat Cummings cracked uh, the joint fastest 50 in the IPL. The Cummings, uh, the Cummings carnage of 14 balls included six sixes and four fours as Calcutta Knight Riders raced to victory over Mumbai Indians. Such uh, was the Australian onslaught the 30 that 34 of his runs came in one over. It was the 16th in which 35 runs were conceded because uh, Daniel Sams bowled a no ball. Cummins, who joined KL Rahul as joint record holder, sealed the deal with a six as Knight Riders won by five wickets with four overs to spare. Mumbai Indians, 161 for four. Surya Kumar Yadav, 52. Knight Riders, 162 for five. Cummins, uh, 56 not out. Uh, Venkatesh Ayer, 50 not out. In tennis, uh, Wimbledon bosses uh, are consulting the government about whether to allow players from Russia and Belarus to compete in this year's tournament. Sharif Sargent explains. The All England Lawn Tennis Club said the issue is complex and challenging. Belarusian and Russian players, such as men's world number two Daniel Medvedev, have been allowed to play on tour, but not under their country's flags. The BBC quotes the organizers as saying that they plan to announce a decision ahead of the entry deadline in mid-May. Russia has been banned from defending its Davis Cup and Billie Jean King Cup team titles after the country's invasion of Ukraine, a military operation supported by Belarus. Teams and athletes from both countries have been subject to a variety of suspensions and sanctions from a number of bodies across the sporting spectrum. Wimbledon will be held from June 27 to July 10. Shreve Sargent, ABS Sports. And finally, in the NBA, the Los Angeles Lakers have missed out on a place in the NBA playoffs after suffering a seventh straight defeat, losing to the Phoenix Suns. Here again is Sharif Sargent. The Lakers, again without the injured LeBron James, fell at the hands of the Western Conference leaders, 121-110. Devin Booker wrapped up a game-high 32. It means it is the fourth time in James's 19-year career that he has failed to make the NBA postseason. The Lakers had to win to stand any chance of extending their season after the San Antonio Spurs outshot the Denver Nuggets 116-97 earlier in the evening. Nuggets lost in spite of a 41-point explosion from Nikola Jokic. Elsewhere, the New Orleans Pelicans secured a playoff place in the Western Conference by rising clear of the Sacramento Kings 123-109, while the Toronto Raptors, thanks to 31 from Pascal Siakam, sealed the playoff spot in the Eastern Conference with a 118-108 victory over the Atlanta Hawks. The Utah Jazz were dancing to a winning beat as well. They overcame the Memphis Grizzlies 121-115 in overtime in Salt Lake City. Utah's success, combined with the Minnesota Timberwolves' 132-114 loss to the Washington Wizards, guaranteed the Jazz at least a six-seed position in the Western Conference playoffs. Also, Kyrie Irving chalked up 42 points as the Brooklyn Nets trapped the Houston Rockets 118-105, while Tyler Hero sank a season-high 35 as Eastern Conference leaders the Miami Heat destroyed the Charlotte Hornets 144-115. The Milwaukee Bucks are now tied for second behind Miami after a 127-106 win over the Chicago Bulls, with DeMar DeRozan leading the charge with 40. Despite the defeat, the Bulls claim their first playoff berth in five seasons after the Cleveland Cavaliers lost 121-15 to the Orlando Magic. Shreve Sargent, ABS Sports. And that's the sport. Indeed, Terry, congratulations again to Los Galacticos, the uh, Los Blancos, that's Real Madrid, uh, showing once again why I support them. As uh, commiserations to the Chelsea fans. It's only one leg. There's a second leg left. Indeed, but a, a mountain to climb for Chelsea, absolutely. In fact, uh, I think that uh, Cecil Mathie is a Chelsea fan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, good evening to you, Cecil. Well, good evening to you, Garfield. It's Manchester. Oh, you're Manchester yes, City. Yes. Never mind. I would have, uh, I would have actually passed on my commiserations to you. Never mind. So we'll leave that one alone and we'll move on to the weather report and forecast. How is it looking? Well, we're looking at a moderate rain flow continue to persist across the area. That is bringing in some cloud and some rain as well. Not much, though, but we'll see how those will work out in the forecast when we return after the break. The weather report is brought to you by Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection. From Medjurin. 
to customer service. To manufacturing. I'm out of the job. Big or small. Leeward Island's hurricane protection does it all. So visit our showroom on Valley Road to get your quote. Or you can call us at 560-4532. Or visit us online at shuttersinparadise.com. Welcome back. Our satellite photograph for this evening reveal a, a dry air mass that sits across the Leeward and Virgin Islands today, generating mostly partly cloudy skies, hardly in the way of showers across the area today. Across the Windward Islands, particularly Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana, they saw some passing showers. But those, that, that dry air gave mainly sunny, produced mainly sunny skies across the Virgin, the Leeward Islands, including Antigua and Barbuda, of course. High temperature rose to about 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. The winds generally came out of the east, averaging just about 14 miles per hour. Just a trade for rainfall was recorded at the airport. So our total so far for the month of April is 1.8 millimeters. Taking a look at the outside, it is partly cloudy out there, with temperatures just about 25 degrees Celsius, 77 Fahrenheit. Winds are moderate out of the east at about 15 miles per hour. So for tonight, we are generally looking for partly cloudy skies. There's a moderate chance of showers in the forecast. The winds will still be moderate out of the east, 10 to 17 miles per hour. Low temperature is expected to dip to about 22 degrees Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit. Come tomorrow, we're looking at another bout of partly cloudy conditions. Some cloudiness could move in and give us a, just, we're looking just about a moderate chance of showers for tomorrow. High temperature once again should rise to about 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. Moderate winds will continue out of the east 10 to 18 miles per hour. Over the seas, splendid seas, three to five feet with winds 12 to 20 miles per hour. For the next couple of days ahead, the high pressure system will dominate the area, making way for mainly partly cloudy skies, only some light showers in between with a moderate chance of showers for Saturday. The seas, if you're planning to go to the beach, will be splendid for the rest of the, for the next couple of days going into the weekend. That takes care of your weather for tonight. I'll take you straight back to Garfield and Terry at this time. All right, Cecil, thanks. Really appreciate it. Cecil, yeah. the older weather report and forecast us before we run. Here's a quick look at the top national developments we covered this evening. John Jarvis takes oath of office as new chairman of the Antigua and Barbuda Electoral Commission. Trade minister sets to initiate legal action against medical school official after ultimatum passes without an apology. Police force mourns the death of one of its former members. And Antigua and Barbuda and Cuba mark 28 years of diplomatic relations. And that's our newscast. We really appreciate your company. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Garfield Burford. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I'm Terry Andrew. We'll see you right back here for the ABS News at 10. I'm Cecil Batu. Enjoy your evening, everyone. You are in tune with the nation's stations, ABS-TV Channel 10, the GIS, and ABS Radio 90.5 FM, proudly serving you, reaching more and more people every day.